So Excalchur, tens of thousands of students, hundreds of universities, uh, dozens of countries, all six continents, dozens of corporate clients. Um, let me tell you what we do, who we are, where we came from, and where we are trying to go with this Excalchur project. Uh, hi, my name is Dr. Vas Taras. I'm a international associate professor of international business at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro. And um, I launched Excalchur 10 years ago. So uh, the original idea for the project was very, very simple. And it sort of came from a need to add an experiential component to my international business courses. If you teach international business, you probably have found yourself in this situation many times too. So where you would be standing in front of the classroom and you would be telling your students that doing business with, for example, Ukrainians is different than doing business with Americans. And your students look at you and they it's not that they don't believe you. It's more like they don't fully comprehend what you're trying to say. It's as if you're trying to teach them how to swim on a football field, right? You can spend hours and hours lecturing them about how water feels, that water is wet. You can show them movies about the ocean and you can assign them books about, you know, the water or, or, or the ocean or the sea. But until the students get in the water, they will not be able to learn how to swim. It's just not something that you can learn from lectures or, or videos or books, right? Same thing with international business. You kind of have to experience it to fully understand the real challenges of working with people from different countries. And so that's exactly what I was sort of missing in my courses. And I thought maybe I can find a way to allow my students work with students from other countries so that they can experience in real life what I'm trying to teach them in the classroom. And so I could not think of anything better at that time than just simply send out an email through the Academy of International Business asking if any colleagues of mine also teach international business and would like to work with me on this. And uh, so the idea was that my students would be placed in teams with students of another professor in a different country. And so they would deal with cultural differences and uh, time zone differences, institutional differences as they are working on a term project. And so by doing so, they will experience in real life the challenges that I'm trying to describe in the classroom. And so I sent out that email and to my surprise, many, many people responded. I thought I would find one professor, but there were seven people or seven universities that participated in the project the first time. We had seven countries. But since then, the numbers have been growing and growing and growing. For example, this semester, we have over 6,000 students. They come, come from 187 universities. Uh, the universities are located in 43 different countries. But many students are taking courses online from different locations. Plus, we now have some non-student participants. So we have a total of 89 countries represented in the project this semester by the location of the students. And so over these years, uh, over 65,000 students have taken part. And then another, what, six or 7,000 will be, 6,000 will be added this semester. So it's tens of thousands of students over the years that have participated in the project. And so what we do is we place those students in global virtual teams. So a typical team would be comprised of usually about six or seven students, each one of them in a different location on the planet. So many teams literally have a student on, on every continent. And so this way, they do experience the time zone differences. They do experience firsthand cultural differences, uh, institutional differences, differences in work styles. They need to work online using online communication tools. So it's a, it's a real deal. And so they work on a challenge for the whole semester. So it's not just a little simulation in course. It's a whole semester project. And so it's also not the same thing as, for example, visiting a country where you just observe. Here you have to complete an assignment with your team members from different countries. So you really learn how to work with people from different countries, not just observe them. Now, 
when we started it doing the first time, when we started doing the, the project, um, the task was very simple. There was some sort of a case study. Uh, you know, if you had a million dollars and you had to start a business, what that business would be basically, write a business plan. But then all kinds of interesting developments started happening that have reshaped and progressed the project far beyond what was originally envisioned. And I will describe those developments in a minute, but I would like to, you know, a disclaimer, you know, honestly admit that all these wonderful developments, all this growth, all these new directions, uh, they are not really a product of some sort of, you know, genius thinking or a big strategic vision a meeting of a bunch of professors who came up with this. I mean, the reality is we basically have been reacting to demand. Uh, like, for example, in 2013, we started working with, with real companies. And so until then, I cannot believe, but we did not think about involving real companies. And so what happened was the opposite. They came to us. Uh, one of our professors was doing a consulting project with Mercedes-Benz. Uh, they were brainstorming some ideas. The professor said, hey, I have access to these ex-culture students. At that time, it must have been about a thousand of them in a semester. And so they thought, well, <clears throat> let's maybe ask these students if they can come up with some solutions to our problems. They tried. And the students actually did a pretty good job. And in fact, here I have a picture. <coughs> so this is our very first meeting at a client's company. So it was in Turkey, Istanbul, at the Mercedes-Benz factory. So they invited about 30 students to attend um, this, you know, Exculture meeting hosted by their company. So they have this big factory in, in Istanbul where they um, make buses and trucks. And so the students were able to meet with the company management, see how those uh, buses and trucks are made, and then present their solutions to the challenge presented by the uh, by Mercedes-Benz. And so again, it was a smaller group that attended the meeting. I mean, there were many more that worked on it virtually. But ever since, we thought, hey, it would actually be much more useful for the students if they worked on real life, like real international business challenges presented by real uh, clients, not something hypothetical. And so ever since, we would allow companies to present challenges to our students, and the students would work on those real life cases. So this semester, we have 14 companies, and they each come from a different country and a different industry. Uh, just to give you some examples of big name companies that you probably know that have participated in Exculture, like for example, Louis Vuitton. So they were asking for um, ideas where they should open the next store and the design for that store and advertisement, you know, how do you make it most appealing to the customers in that location? Or for example, the Home Depot, uh, the uh, retailer of uh, home construction, you know, materials and, and tools. So they were asking for ideas for how to improve the dot-com services, but also how to expand beyond North America. So they operate currently in Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Uh, so they wanted some ideas for how to expand beyond uh, this market. Um, so all kinds of different big companies, but also many smaller companies. So we have, for example, Milada Chocolate. They make chocolate out of Colombia. Or, for example, uh, Unicheck, uh, a plagiarism detection software company out of Ukraine. Uh, so, or for example, you know, all kinds of clothing companies or um, IT companies, just about any industry you can think of. Uh, so Polaris, for example, snowmobiles and ATVs, those kinds of things. And so this way the students have not only the international experience, but also the business consulting experience. So we organize live webinars with the clients. So they meet the CEO, they meet the company founder, uh, the management team, they ask questions, get feedback. So it becomes a pretty involved you know, project where the clients work with the students, the students present their ideas. Everybody wins. The clients get uh, brilliant ideas from the students. In many cases, the students bring them uh, real business leads, uh, you know, literally go and find potential buyers or distributors or retailers. Um, uh, so suggestions, like some companies literally change their names following the students' advice. So, but also the students learn international business. Uh, students also learn business models of their clients. And in many cases, they like each other so much. Uh, some of the reports are so good that the client says, hey, can you tell me who wrote it? I want to give them a job. And so some students get jobs. Uh, some get internships. So it's a win-win combination. Uh, the businesses get what they want, but the students also learn in the process. So now we would select 10 plus companies in a given semester and students can choose any of those clients and work on that challenge.
Now, other developments happen too. Like, for example, we have this wonderful, um, what we call the Exculture Coaching Program. So what happened um, was that many students wanted to participate in Exculture again, and then often again, and again, and again. So they did it first as part of their course at a university, but then they said, I liked it very much, can I do it again? And so once we had students who have participated two, three, or even four times, we thought, hey, why ask them to do the same thing again when they can actually do something more productive? And so we started inviting the best students from the last semester to become coaches to the new generation of Exculture students. So now we would invite uh, about 500 students or so. And so those who applied, they have to take 16 training modules. You know, we train them how to give feedback. Uh, cross-cultural conflict resolution, online collab collaboration tools, a little bit more basics of international business. So they have to take those training modules, they have to take tests, and then if they pass the test, they become the coach, uh, the coaches for the new generation of Exculture students. So for example, this semester we have 52 new coaches, and then we have about 25 what we call head coaches, so the coaches who do the coaching program again. So now they become coaches to the coaches. And so again, it's a very wonderful arrangement because this way I get helpers. I get dozens of qualified, additionally trained, usually a former MBA students who have done Exculture, they have the experience, and now they're sharing their wisdom, the tips, the guidance uh, with the new generation of Exculture participants. But then also the coaches themselves gain val very valuable experience. In addition to you know being the members of the teams the first time, now they're basically managers, mentors, coaches, uh, big brothers, if you want to call it that way, to hundreds of international teams. So they deal with all kinds of, you know, conflicts and interesting situations in teams. And, you know, they provide feedback. Uh, they help teams, you know, set up meetings, all kinds of things. And I'll be honest with you, not even many managers have that sort of experience. I mean, how many managers really manage, like, truly diverse, like, very, very multicultural teams, hundreds of them, and they see what's going on in those teams. They read their weekly reports. They provide feedback. I mean, this is the kind of experience that, you know, not many people have. So a very, very good thing for the students, both for experience, but also when the time comes to apply for jobs. I mean, you, you have on your resume something that nobody else has, right? So uh, very good that in that respect. Another interesting development is uh, Exculture Kids and Exculture Professionals. Again, the first few years we did it, it was all university students. But then friends of those students started hearing about Exculture and they started saying, hey, can I participate? Likewise, many professors who participate in Exculture, and over the years we've had 809 professors as of now who have participated in Exculture. About two-thirds of them participate multiple times. Uh, some retire at some point. Some have participated every single time ever since we started the project. And so um, the professor started asking me, you know, I have a child. 15 year old, uh, you know, very smart, very talented, can he or she participate? And so initially we were saying no, uh, you know, it was mainly for the university students. But then I thought, hey, maybe let's give it a try. And so first we allowed the non-student professionals, adults, to participate. And the vast majority of them were people who just wanted that this experience uh, you know, on their resume, so if they apply for a job or a promotion, they have something that will differentiate them from the competition. And so we had a lot of professionals, many of them full-time employees, who said, I want to do it specifically for the experience. And then also some students who just happen to be at universities that do not participate in Exculture, and they said, well, I really want to participate, we just don't have a course for it, so can I participate individually? But then a growing number of teenagers. So first we did it with 100 teenagers who were all kids of our professors but then friends of those kids and then friends of those friends came and so now we would get up to 2,000 applications in a given semester from kids who would like to participate in Exculture. I mean obviously for the younger teenagers it would be the parents who apply. Now we started getting applications from teachers so but we also have a lot of applications from older teenagers who apply on their own. Apparently in some countries like in Ireland uh, teenagers have to take one year off or one semester off in the high school to do some sort of projects. And so they often look for those projects, and Exculture is a wonderful project to do. So they come to us and say, hey, can I do Exculture during this semester? Works for us. So we have a total of 
normally about 2,000 applications from something like 115 countries. But again, with the kids, we make them take some training before they're placed on teams. And so for four weeks, they have to take 16 training modules, four modules per week, and they have to take a test on each of those. And obviously not everyone is prepared to, you know, for that sort of workload, uh, you know, week after week after week. So some drop out, some may not be fully qualified as far as English goes or things like that. But then still quite a few of them survive and stay in the project and then uh, participate. And obviously we match children's teams uh, by age. So if it's a team of 14-year-olds, uh, everybody on the team is 14 year old, years old. And so again, uh, if it's a younger, younger than 16, we want parents to be involved, obviously for safety. But yeah, it works very well. And we experimented with children as young as nine-year-old olds in fact when we did that my child my own child was nine years old at that time she participated it was a great experience uh they would spend a lot of time on skype talking to team members you know about school about music about movies very interesting here i was surprised that i had to teach them for example how to write emails turns out kids these days they don't write emails and so you know usually like snapchat is good for you know just hanging out but if you have to develop a business proposal for a client company uh, you obviously, you know, have to do it uh, in a more sophisticated way. So we had to teach them how to use Dropbox and Google Docs and, you know, all those tools. And uh, so, yeah, so very interesting experience and the kids loved it, did very good presentations and, you know. Then another development is the Xculture Symposium. So many of our students started using the Xculture experience to write a paper, like a research paper. And they started coming with us to the Academy of Management, Academy of International Business Conferences as co-presenters. But then so many of them were interested in going to these meetings that we started organizing separate what we call Xculture Global Symposium. So we do one every fall in collaboration with the Academy of International Business, the U.S. Southeast Division. And so usually we have about 50 students attending those symposia. And then because of the demand and because there is a limit on how many students we can bring to a real kind of scholarly conference. So starting several years ago, we started organizing the Xculture Symposium in the summer on our own. So twice a year. So the summer one uh, usually has up to 200 people about 50 professors and 150 students and here I'm not sure if you can see I have pictures from each of those meetings so we've had about 13 14 of them so far so the last one was in Canada uh, in uh, last summer before that it was in Italy before that it was in Miami in the United States this particular one was supposed to be in Singapore uh, but we had to cancel it because of the coronavirus. We will move it to the next year, so um, it will be just a little bit later. So again, a wonderful event for the whole week. The students meet the local community leaders and professionals and the mayor of the city, uh, visit a lot of companies, and we do all kinds of web I mean, uh, seminars on how to write a resume, how to look for a job, how to apply to a graduate program, those kinds of things, very useful stuff. Uh, then uh, research. Research is a huge component of Xculture. We collect a lot of data. Uh, we track over 2,000 variables, uh, multi-level, individual, team, university, country, multi-source, uh, self-reports, peer evaluations, experts evaluations, um, uh, administrative records, qualitative, quantitative, longitudinal, uh, many variables attract every week, so we have weekly progress reports and measure many things every single week. And so we do a lot of research. If you go to our website, you will see we have about 40 papers in development now. Uh, we have published uh, dozens of papers. Uh, we have six dissertations already defended based on Xculture data, and we have about a dozen dissertations being developed now as we speak. We are collecting data for two dissertations at this time, so work a lot with the graduate students as well, so big deal. Uh, several times a year, we even organize what we call the Xculture Research Hackathon. And so what that is, um, about a dozen professors would uh, sort of lock ourselves in a dormitory, usually during the summer when it's empty. And for a week, nonstop, we do research. Wake up, start writing papers, start doing some analyses, uh, every few hours meet, provide a presentation update to your colleagues, get feedback, get criticized, work for a few mo more hours, repeat, and then so till midnight, and then you drop sleep for a few hours and repeat next day. A very good experience in those several concentrated days of work. You can literally go from the research idea to the full draft of the paper. Uh, you know, you kind of pack about 100 hours in that week 
just doing nothing but research, switch off everything. So again, we booked um, a, a whole house in Vancouver right before the Academy of Management conference for this year. Uh, so hopefully the conference will not be canceled. And if so, we'll have one of those hackathons in a few months again this year. Um, so another thing that we started doing is what we call the Xculture Business Incubator. Many students come to us with interest in ideas and want feedback on the uh, business plans, but uh, also many ask for help. And so we provide them sort of the Xculture um umbrella under which they can try to do things like, for example, raise funds through Kickstarter, or maybe try to do the minimum viable product so we don't kind of allow them to do it uh, in a way that uh, they don't have to go through all their registrations and legal and accounting side. So we kind of provide that platform. We're still testing it. We've done it only in, with a few companies or a few startup ideas. But if it goes, we may do it on a, on a much larger scale. But yeah, that's basically the idea. So there are a few other ideas that we want to do. Like, for example, we want to build this um, a virtual TA platform, which is basically like almost like Uber or Airbnb, but for teaching assistants. So students uh, are eager to work with professors for experience. So when they apply to colleges, to graduate programs, they can say, I was a teaching assistant to a professor in, for example, the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. And so uh, they, they want to do that. They're willing to do it for free. They're willing to do it for, for mentorship, for experience. But I, as a professor, I'm always in need of help. And so we have hundreds of students interested to help, and we have hundreds of professors needed needing help. And so we're trying to build this platform where the two groups can meet each other and can basically exchange time in exchange for mentorship and recommendation letters. So lots of interesting ideas, but that's basically what we do. So you can find more information on xculture.org. So where is my website here? And uh, if you Google my name, uh, my contacts should be there on the first you know, page. Um, contact me. I would be happy to give you more information. So exciting times, uh, lots of plans. Uh, we'll see how things go. And especially now, it's actually interesting. We see a huge increase in applications for the next semester, both from universities, but especially from the parents of the kids with all this quarantine and people sitting at home all of a sudden the value of good experience based education from home is becoming very important and so it seems like uh, parents kids uh, professionals students all of a sudden want to work with us to gain that experience online but in real collaboration not just an online course but a real collaboration project with real clients with real people so we'll see how things go but it seems like we'll have many more participants next semester uh, because of this whole geopolitical and pandemic situation Thank you very much, and uh, if you have any questions, please do contact me anytime.